around with strife. I never was cut out to step and strut out. Give me the simple line. Some find it pleasant dining on pheasant. Those things roll off my knife. Just serve me tomatoes and mashed potatoes. Give me the simple life. A cottage small is all I'm after. Not one that's spacious and wide. A house that rings with joy and laughter. And the ones you love inside. Some like the high road. I like the low road. Free from the care and strife. Sounds corny and seedy, but yes, indeedy, give me the simple life. Well, give me the simple life indeed. And so today we are going to make some simple yogurt cookies. Today's flavor is going to be lemon, but you can make these cookies in whatever flavor you like. So you can make blueberry yogurt, uh, raspberry, blackberry, apple rhubarb, uh, apple strawberry, you name it. If you can get a yogurt in that flavor, you can make these cookies in that flavor. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is mix our dry ingredients. No, I take that back. The first thing I've already done, and it's just letting me know it's ready, is I preheated my oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. And I have greased two cookie sheets. And I've also set up my cookie racks for them to cool on when they're done. So, first thing we're going to do is mix our dry ingredients. So we want a large bowl and add, you want to add three cups of multi-purpose flour. And to that you are going to add a cup and a half of sugar. That's a lot of sugar, I know. You could use Splenda. Today I'm not using Splenda. As you know I quite often do, but uh, I'm not going to use Splenda today. I'm using good old-fashioned I'm not sure how old-fashioned it is, but uh, white granular sugar. I'd have to check the history on sugar to see how long they've made white granular refined sugar. It's probably a more modern thing, I'm guessing. It's uh, as in within the last 150, 200 years, maybe. I don't know. Anybody know the answer to that? You can add it in the comments and tell me how long white granulated sugar has been in production. Alrighty, so we have three cups of flour and a cup and a half of sugar. And we're blending that together with our whisk. Now we're going to add a half of a teaspoon, that's half a teaspoon of baking soda, the kissing powder. So that's the one that makes you pucker. Well, if you really want to pucker, you should try some alum sometime. That'll, that'll really suck you up. All right, so that's a half a teaspoon of baking soda. And then we are going to add a teaspoon, one teaspoon of baking powder. So we have baking soda and baking powder in this one. So get those blended together really well. And then we are going to add to that a teaspoon of salt. Sorry, I had to think there for a minute. So one teaspoon of salt. Now I know salt's been around for ages, because at one time, back in the days of the Roman Empire, the Roman soldiers were actually sometimes paid with salt. And that's where the saying, worth your salt, comes from. So if you're a good soldier, you're worth your salt. Hopefully in this day and age, none of you are working for salt, because it's just uh, a little more common and not quite as uh, worth quite as much money as it was back then. So there we go. So that's all our dry ingredients. So three cups cake flour, half a teaspoon baking soda, one teaspoon baking powder, one teaspoon salt, and a cup and a half of sugar. Get that all blended together, and then we're going to set that aside. Then we want another large, bigger bowl than what we had. And into this, we are going to add, oops, I forgot to get up a little spatula, our yogurt. And we want a half cup of the yogurt of your flavor. Today we're using lemon. 
So this is a half a cup of lemon yogurt. Now I'm using uh, low fat. You can use whatever kind of yogurt you want. But, uh, what I happen to have in the house right now is low fat lemon yogurt and that'll work just fine. Remember years ago a lady made a made a uh, dessert for a potluck that I went to and everybody was raving over how great it was and they they uh, said to her, Edith, this dessert is fabulous. Can we get the recipe? And she goes, oh, it's, it's nothing special. It's just a diet recipe I found in a magazine. But instead of artificial sweetener, I used sugar. And instead of skim milk, I used whole cream. And so basically what she'd done is she'd taken this diet recipe she found in a magazine and gone to the other end of the stick with it and change everything from whatever it was that was minimal to whatever it was that was maximum. All right, our next ingredient is going to be two eggs, which of course, as always, we will remove from the shells. Make sure we don't uh, get any shell in there because nobody likes a crunchy cookie unless it's supposed to be crunchy. So two eggs. And add them to our yogurt. So, so far in the bowl you've got a half a cup of whatever flavor yogurt you're using. And two beaten eggs. Then we're going to add a third of a cup of vegetable oil. I'm using canola oil. And actually that's what I would recommend use is that I wouldn't, wouldn't recommend using olive oil or sesame seed oil or peanut oil um, or even coconut oil. I think I would stick with just like a canola oil or a basic vegetable oil. a paper towel here and then we want to add a teaspoon of lemon juice. Now if, if you uh, live somewhere where they, you have lemon trees you get a fresh lemon or go to your store and buy a fresh lemon. I had intended to go and buy a fresh lemon and I totally forgot about it but uh, this will work. It's one teaspoon of lemon juice. Now of course if you're not making lemon flavor um, yeah, I would still add the teaspoon of lemon juice. It'll help bring out the flavor of whatever you're using. However, I would not use this, which is lemon extract. Okay, so I'm using, it's uh, pure lemon extract. And because I'm making lemon cookies, it's just to enhance the flavor. So I'm going to add a teaspoon of lemon extract. If you're making strawberry yogurt, they do make a strawberry extract. Um, most of your other flavors, what I'd suggest would be to substitute um, maybe maybe not a full teaspoon but a half a teaspoon of um, vanilla instead of the um, my brain is not working today I'm sorry instead of the lemon extract alrighty so we now have our wet ingredients together that off with my trusty fork. I think if you took away my forks and my whisks, I might be at a loss in the kitchen. And so we're going to really beat that together. Just get in there with a fork and just give it a good beat. Now you could, again, if you prefer to use a mix master, by all means, you can use a mix master. I do have one. I have a very nice uh, professional grade uh, KitchenAid mix master. But two reasons I don't use it. One is for something this small, it's just not worth getting it out. Second reason is I want to keep my physique, so you know I gotta keep my muscles built up for stirring. And the third one is it's fairly noisy, and so if I was using it, you probably wouldn't be able to hear me. 
So now the next step is we're going to take our dry ingredients and start mixing them into our wet ingredients. Oops. Yes, fork, I know you're dry, but you're not an ingredient. Fortunately, the pan's not quite wide enough to let the fork go into the mix. So, yep, we just start mixing that in. Now, if you're using a mixer, you might want to mix it in a little, little more slowly than I'm doing, just because you don't want the uh, big cloud of flour dust floating around your kitchen. But I add probably about a quarter cup at a time and mix it in. The biggest trick, of course, is to avoid lumps, but if you have a good fork and a good arm, that shouldn't be a problem. Now these are a drop cookie, so they're, you're not going to have a dough, you're going to have more of a, a sort of a batter. That we will then drop by the spoonful onto the cookie sheet. But let's uh, get to that point. So I'm going to tell you a little story. It's a fellow was driving along the, the road in his little car. Not sure what make a car it was, not really important, but uh, it was a small enough car that he only had four lug nuts on each wheel. And uh, anyway, he's driving along and all of a sudden there's a bang! And he feels his car kind of lean to the side and he's struggling to steer it. And luckily he's not going that fast, he's in town, so he pulls his car off to the side of the road and gets out and sure enough, he's got a flat tire on the on the back right hand side. And so he gets the spare tire out of the trunk. This was back in the days when they actually had spare tires rather than those little pony donut baloney things. He gets it out and he gets the jack out and he jacks the car up and he undoes the lug bolts or lug nuts. And he puts them in the hubcap like you're supposed to. Takes, takes the uh, flat tire off and as he turns to sit the flat tire down, he hits the hubcap, knocks it flying, and all of the lug nuts, the four lug nuts that are in the hubcap come out, and they roll down into a sort of storm sewer grate. And he says, ah, oh, great, now what am I going to do? So he's standing there looking down the grate, trying to think if there's any way he can reach down through this grating to get his lug nuts out. And all of a sudden you hear somebody going, hey, mister, mister. He stops and looks around. He doesn't see anybody at first, and, but he sees there's a really high wrought iron fence. It's well, probably 12, 13 feet high. It's about 10 feet away from him, across the grass, or the grass. And he sees the gate post just a little further down, this big sign. It says, Sunnyside Insane Asylum. Hmm, never noticed that before, he says. Oh. He turns back and he's realizing that this probably is a lost cause. He's not going to be able to get these lug nuts out of there. And all of a sudden he hears, Hey, mister! Mister! So he looks around again and he notices there's a fellow on the other side of the fence standing right up against the fence with his face kind of squished between the bars. He's going, Yeah, you, mister! Looks at the guy, so, you talking to me? Yeah, who do you think I'm talking to? Oh, well, uh, I, I, I don't know, do I know you? No, you don't know me. Well, what can I do for you? Nothing. Well, why are you calling me? Because if you take one lug nut off, off of each of your other three wheels, you can put your spare tire on. You'll only have three lug nuts in each wheel, but it'll get you to a gas station, and you can buy some new lug nuts. And the guy looks at the tire and the lug nuts down the drain and looks back at the guy behind the fence at the insane asylum and he goes, wow, you know, that's really smart. That's, that's a great idea. I'll do that. I said, what, what are you doing in there? He says, you're obviously a very intelligent person. The guy goes, mister, I'm crazy. I'm not stupid. Oh, another bad one. Oh, great. You didn't even have to wait till Friday for this, that one. So, I think I'm going to put you on pause till I get the rest of this flour worked in, because otherwise we'll be here till the cows come in for milking at 6 o'clock. Alrighty, hang on a second. Alright, and we're back. It's all mixed up and we're ready to go. You can see what it looks like. So what we're going to do now 
scoop, we are going to just take spoonfuls of it and drop onto our sheet. Just that easy. I told you, this is a simple recipe. Giving me the simple life. Right? A cottage small is all I'm after. Not one that's spacious and wide. A house that's filled with joy and laughter. And the ones you love inside. Some like the high road, I like the low road. Free from the care and strife. Counts, sounds corny and seedy, but yes, indeedy, give me the simple life. Now these are going to spread out as they cook, so these are probably a little bigger than I'd normally make them, but I figured it'd be easier for you to see. Unfortunately, it won't be easier for you to taste, but as soon as I get uh, teleportation figured out, like they had in Star Trek, uh, You'll be able to leave me a comment and I can zap a cookie out to you. Beam me a cookie, Scotty, I'm hungry. First back, if that get to that point, probably have the uh, replicators like they had on the Enterprise as well. We won't need to. Oh, wait a minute, I think that was next generation, wasn't it, that they had the replicators? I don't think they had that in the original Star Trek. But, uh, anyway. They do replicators, the joy of cooking will be no more. Well, watch this, people. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to wash my hands. All right, so these are ready to go in the oven. You want to bake them at 375 for about 10 minutes. They say 9 to 12 minutes. So it'll depend on the size of your cookies, on your oven. I'm going to do these for, put the timer on for 10 minutes. And I'll see you then. So hang on and we'll be back in 10 minutes. Alrighty, so our timer is almost up. We're down to 24 seconds. Out of the oven. I've got my other two pans ready to go. Normally this will make about three dozen cookies. I made mine just slightly larger so I got uh, just a hair over two and a half. I got uh, two, two dozen and eight cookies. But uh, you know, make your cookies the size you like. If you like big cookies, make them big. If you like small cookies, make them small. And uh, one thing I learned a long time ago is that seldom do cookie recipes make the number of cookies they say they will. There we go. You can see these lovely, lovely lemon cookies. Let's put one out there. I put my sheets here. Let them cool on the sheet for just a, a few seconds before you take them off. My next batch in. And uh, there we go. Now, one thing I could have added to these that I didn't, because uh, they're lemon flavored, I could have added some lemon zest. If you're making blueberry yogurt cookies, you could make add some blueberries. Uh, you can fancy these up any way you want, or just make them just simple with the yogurt flavor. But that's our uh, our goodie for today. And one last tip on these: when you go to store them, you want to put a layer of wax paper between the cookies because even once they're baked they will stick to each other. So unless you want a big glob of cookies in the bottom of your cookie jar or, or pan or whatever you keep them in, put a layer of wax paper between each layer of cookies and you'll be good to go. So, my friends, until next Tuesday's cooking video, we'll say goodbye to the baking and I'll see you on Friday for our groaners and shout outs of the week. And I might, depending on what the mailman brings this week, I might be doing another special video uh, because I'm expecting a package from Digger One. That's a channel to check out. I'll put them in the description below. Digger One, he's a metal detectorist in England who had a competition gift giveaway. I'm not sure what uh, title you want to put on it. YouTube's kind of fussy about those things. But uh, anyway, he was doing a, a question. He went for four weeks. No, nope, five weeks I think it was. And each week he had a question, and if you wanted to enter the giveaway, you answered the question. 
and then he did a draw from the people who had the correct answer. And on week four, I believe it was, uh, surprise to me, in the random draw, I won. And so the parcel is in the mail to me, and I will do a special unboxing of that when it arrives. I'm figuring sometime this week it should arrive. So if it does, I'll see you then. If not, I'll see you Friday for shoutouts and the Groaner of the Week. Take care, God bless, and enjoy yourselves. Life is short, so don't waste a second of it.